Well, at long last, they're finally here. The first two figures in Tomy's line of Sonic figures based off their modern or current designs. And the first ones we have here are Sonic and Knuckles. Before I begin, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. I bought these Sonic and Knuckles figures from Toys R Us. I bought them in person. I didn't buy them online. I think they're about $16 or $17 each. I can't remember exactly. To answer another question, I'm probably going to get asked, no, you cannot have or buy any of the things that I'm about to show you in this video from me. You can buy your own at Toys R Us or online somewhere, but I'm not going to give you or sell you any of the toys that I have in this video or any of the toys I have that are going to be in any of my videos. So do yourself and me a favor and just don't bother asking. For those of you who don't know, currently the only way to get these new modern Sonic figures from Tomy is to purchase them in a comic book two-pack with their classic design counterparts. So you would get a, a pack with Sonic, old Sonic and new Sonic, and a pack with old Knuckles and new Knuckles and they would come with an Archie comic book. I'll briefly compare them to their original release counterparts. Here's the original Sonic. So side by side we have the original release classic Sonic from Tomy here on the right and the newer release on the left here. The paint is maybe a little bit cheaper. The figure feels just somewhat cheaper in general. It's nothing huge. It's not a big deal or anything. It's still an excellent figure. I really like these Tomy classic figures a whole lot. I'll, pro I'll do a separate review of them sometime. One of the big differences is the paint on the gloves and the shoes is no longer glossy. As you can see on the new one here. There's a little bit of extra white plastic that kind of comes off of the glove and onto the arm there. I don't know how easy that is to see. I'll zoom in here. So if you compare that to the original one, I don't know why they, I don't know why it's like that. It's just something I noticed. Other than that, though, the figure seems to be pretty much exactly the same. Here are the two Knuckles figures. On the right, we have the original release from last year, and on the left, we have the current release. For some reason, on the original, they used a real shiny paint on the muzzle, face, skin area, and on the new one, it's a flat kind of peach color. The gloves on the original release are shiny and the new ones are kind of a flat matte finish and the shoes are almost exactly the same. The old ones look maybe a little bit shinier. The eye paint is a little bit better maybe on the new one because of the uh, the highlights in it. They're painted a little bit more symmetrical or like the shine is on the the uh, left of the eye as opposed to the yeah, like see how they're kind of off on the original. One of the biggest differences on the new Knuckles, or the new classic Knuckles, is how loose the head is. I mean, it's almost like it's on a ball joint, so you can kind of get the head into more expressive positions this way. It almost looks up and down, and it kind of tilts side to side. I don't think it's supposed to do that, because Sonic doesn't do that, and the original doesn't do this nearly as much. The original release doesn't do this nearly as much. It's just something to note. If you wanted to get these classic Sonic and Knuckles figures from Tomy and you didn't get a chance to get them the first time, and this is a good opportunity to get them again. They're still really good figures. I definitely recommend them. They're some of my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog figures of all time. If you do already have them, it's kind of annoying to have to rebuy them and spend the extra money just to get the modern figures. Uh, but, I mean, for me personally, I don't mind having an extra classic Sonic and Knuckles figures. So the new kids on the block are modern Sonic and modern Knuckles. Now, sculpt-wise, these look really nice. I love how these figures look. I think they really captured the appearance well. The faces, the sculpts, the hands, everything looks really good. And the arms and legs, the way they're kind of pre-posed like that, like the legs are just bent slightly and the arms are bent slightly, especially on knuckles. I think that helps a lot. The Sonic's head sculpt and face paint is really nice. The nose has a little bit of overspray there. You can see some of the black leaking off onto the face. The eyes, people have complained a lot about because they're a little too big, maybe a little too far apart. And I can see that, but it doesn't look bad. It just, I don't know, it looks a little bit off model from the, uh, like the video game graphics and stuff. But it's not bad. I really like that the eyes are painted in kind of a, a glossy white paint, so they look kind of wet. I don't know if that's intentional and, you know, they might stop using the glossy paint after a while, but this release looks really nice to me. 
One of the first things I noticed when I took it out of the box is the mouth doesn't have any paint unlike the classic figures. So it's just a sculpted little line down there. It's barely indented there. You can barely see it. And uh, I, I wish it was a little bit more pronounced. The ears look fine. The spikes look good. They're all in the right place. I mean, the sculpt is wonderful. Really, really good. The body is maybe a little big. And I think that's probably just because they had to make some room here in the crotch for the leg articulation. Yeah, the crotch area is a little bit elongated, so it looks a little funny, but it's not too bad. Other than that, though, the body's pretty good. You got the spikes and the tail on it and everything. The arms are a little bit thick, maybe, but I understand it's a small figure, you know. If they made them much thinner, they'd be really, really delicate and prone to breaking. So I think they did a pretty good job here. This is a good thickness, especially when compared to the Jazzwares figures. The hands are sculpted fine. They're just fists. I kind of wish they were in some other position because I, I don't know why they're just fists, especially when the classic figures from Tomy and the Sonic Boom figures had open hands so they could hold accessories and stuff. Sonic and Knuckles just have both closed fists, and I'm not really sure why they did that. It does not They don't look bad. They're just kind of boring, you know? So the legs are a little thicker than the arms, and I guess that's to help make the plastic a little more durable, so they won't be so bendy and the figure won't collapse under its own weight, because it's got to, you know, it still has to stand up. And just due to the nature of the designs of Sonic and most of the Sonic characters, they're not, you know, they don't lend themselves to working in the real world that well just because they have such huge heads and tiny legs. The shoes look really good. They have that shape they're supposed to have. They're kind of bent up at the ends and a little bit bent up at the back, which is good. You know, the buckle and the strap and everything's in the right place, the sock detail. They even have that little uh, line on the backs of the shoes. It's gray. I always think this is supposed to be white. They have it painted gray here, but I think it hasn't been white since somewhere around Sonic Adventure 1. I think in the current games they just leave it gray, which, I don't know, I, I liked it being white. Here's one of the first things that sucks about this figure. There's no detailing on the bottoms of the shoes. It's just flat has the Tomy and Sega detail on it. Made in Vietnam. That's interesting. Huh. I've never seen that before. I've seen stuff made in China and Hong Kong, Malaysia and stuff before, but never Vietnam. That's really interesting. I just noticed that. There are peg holes on the bottoms of the shoes, as you can see here, but they don't come with stands of any kind, and I don't know if they plan to release any kind of accessories or vehicles that these figures can stand on. Maybe this is just so you can peg them into other stuff that the Sonic Boom figures came with. The classic figures don't have pegs in their shoes, but the Sonic Boom figures do. Might be a little hard to see there, but there's a product number stamped on the inside of Sonic's leg, which is kind of annoying. I mean, at least it kind of blends in with the dark blue fur, but I would really have preferred it on the bottom of his shoe. I mean, they put numbers on the bottoms of this on the bottom of this shoe. So I don't know why they couldn't have fit that number on the bottom of this one or something. They had to put it up there. And that's a trend I'm noticing with a lot of modern toys in general. They're putting, you know, the number on, you know, somewhere really visible like that. And it really, it's really annoying. Now, Knuckles' head sculpt is great as well. And the face paint on him, I think, is even better. This is one of the most perfect looking Knuckles faces on a figure that I've ever seen. The eyes look better than Sonic's, the nose is better painted, the mouth is a little more noticeable, everything looks really nice. I can't really spot any flaws on this face at all, it's really great. I think it looks better than the Jazzwares knuckles as far as the sculpt. Really really nice. Dreadlocks are all the right lengths, they look really really good. The body kind of has the same problem as Sonic's, where it has that kind of elongated crotch piece, but it's not really that big of a deal. Especially on Knuckles, since his body is all red and it's not as noticeable, since Sonic has the belly dot that covers his whole stomach area, but Knuckles just has the little toenail shape. The thickness of Knuckles' arms and legs, about the same as Sonic's, you know, maybe a little thick, but nothing too bad. I think the thickness on Knuckles' legs maybe looks a little bit better to me. I'm not sure. The fists look really good. Sculpt is real nice. You can see the individual joints of his fingers, like where his the joints of his fingers theoretically would be on his thumb and his fingers that would be inside the kind of mitten shape there. Spikes look good. Very boxing glove-like. The fists look huge. I don't know if they're too big, maybe slightly, but it's not that big of a deal. 
if they are. They just seem really, really big to me. It's got the long, jagged tail. Mine's a little bit bent, I just now noticed. Doesn't really go straight back, and I, I don't know if that's just from packaging, or mine came out that way, or it got bent over time, because I have it kind of leaning up against a box on display in my room. Knuckles shoes look good. There's nothing really wrong with them. They've got the right shape, or they're kind of bent up in the front and bent up in the back. Although, having them bent up in the back can kind of lead to some stabilization issues like since the figures are kind of top heavy you can kind of make them fall back and Sonic suffers from the same issue all the details there the Legos and the shoe soles except you know Sonic he has the same problem as Sonic there's no detail on the bottoms of the shoes which sucks like Sonic Knuckles has the same leg number tattoo only his is a lot more noticeable because he's got bright red fur Sonic had dark blue I don't know why they can't just put it on the bottoms of the shoes like, see, there's a number there. I don't see why it would be so hard to put it down there. I don't know if it's some kind of toy making regulation. I'm not sure. I think it's just laziness because some of the, you know, most of their other toys don't have it up there, or at least the classic figures don't. Now, as far as scaling, this is another common complaint. Knuckles looks just a little bit too big. I mean, you compare the size of like his shoes to Sonic's, they look gargantuan, and he's considerably taller than Sonic. Now, I don't know if Knuckles is supposed to be taller than Sonic. I, I kind of always imagined him to be about the same height as Sonic, or maybe even shorter than Sonic sometimes. Because I've seen a couple of instances where Knuckles, compared to like standing next to Sonic in some of the games or media, wherever, he looks slightly shorter than Sonic. Now, I don't know if that's currently accurate or if it was ever accurate i don't know but i think that makes it a little more interesting it gives kind of a wolverine dynamic i think these figures do look really nice standing next to each other knuckles just i don't know he looks slightly out of scale so overall the figures look fantastic i really think tomi did an excellent job sculpt wise and paint wise on these figures you know for the most part there are a couple of issues like i really don't like the fact that there's no detail on the bottoms of the shoes and that kind of worries me about if they release a modern shadow figure because uh shadow is a character what's real important to have detail on the bottoms of the shoes because he's got jets on the bottom and for those of you who remember for years it was just shadow figures being produced by toy island that had nothing on the bottoms of the shoes it was just flat red really cheap really boring and the only way to get a figure that had the correct detail was to buy that ridiculously expensive joyride studio shadow figure uh, and then jazzwares finally made a three inch shadow figure that had jet detailing on the bottoms of the shoes and that was one of the coolest things ever to people who collected sonic figures like me so if tommy makes any more modern figures especially if shadow or someone with shoes like that and need a lot of detail i really hope they step up their game but otherwise really really nice looking figures so that brings us to the elephant in the room the articulation oh man i've got a few things to say about this those of you who don't know when tomi first started making sonic figures and they brought out their sonic boom toy line uh, the articulation was less than impressive it wasn't awful it just was a lot less than we were used to with what Jazzwares had brought us. And then when Tomy brought out the classic figures, they had greatly improved the articulation and brought back all the articulation that Jazzwares had on their classic styled figures, minus the waist joint, and they were really, really good. And people were hoping that they would bring that level of articulation onto these new modern figures. And unfortunately, they did not. Instead, they went back to the same basic five points of articulation that the Sonic Boom figures had. So Sonic can twist his head, it's a pretty tight joint, can move his arms all the way around, and they move up and down, which is nice, and the legs can move forward about that far, and back about that far. And that's it, there's no wrist swivel, no ankle swivel, the legs don't have that universal joint that the shoulder does, so they can't move out to the side, it's just real basic. And it's not bad articulation, you can still get him into good running poses and a couple of things, but, you know, it's just really disappointing when compared to what we had with Jazzwares. You can't even really get him into a spin dash pose. Uh, I guess jumping or bouncing off a spring or whatever, flying. But, I mean, you know, there's not nearly as much room for creativity and fun with these. Knuckles has the same articulation, but with him it's even worse because he's got these big dreadlocks in the way. And they're much thicker than they were on the Jazzwares figure. So it's really hard. You can kind of 
push the arm past it and get the arm to go forward, but not really that much. I mean, it's hard to get him into a, like you, you can kind of get him into maybe a, a little bit of a gliding pose like that. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Kind of looks more like a skydiving pose, but whatever. You can't really get him in too many good punching poses. You can kind of do that. You can kind of get him into a running pose like that. You know, that looks pretty good. So, I mean, the articulation isn't bad. It's just very disappointing compared to what we had before. And there are just, there are some tiny things they could have done that would have made them so much better. You know, just a wrist swivel or the universal leg, the hip joints, the ball jointed hips like the classic figures had. That would have helped immensely. So I can only assume that this level of articulation is going to continue on to their later modern figures. I mean, hopefully they'll start adding at least a little bit more. I hope the modern tails will at least have articulated tails, because that, that was one of the things that really sucked to me on the classic tails. You couldn't move the tails at all. This is disappointing, but at least the figures look really nice. And that's the thing about these figures so far. I think they're definitely more concerned about the way they look than the way that they can pose. And if that's what you're more concerned about, if you prefer this look to the more chopped up, kind of bulky look of the super articulated Jazzwares figures, then I think you'll enjoy these. And speaking of Jazzwares, why don't we bring those figures out for a comparison. Now aside from articulation, one of the differences you might notice between these two figures is that Jazzwares Sonic over here comes with a little plastic stand. Now most of the Jazzwares 3 inch figures did come with some kind of stand or accessory and the stands really helped with posability. You could get them to stand on one foot and it was nice for display or animations or whatever. The Tomy Sonic figure seems to stand on his own a little bit better than the Jazzwares figures in general but he's still fairly top heavy because of those big spikes and the bent shoes. You know, it, doesn't, yeah, so he keeps wanting to fall over. And just in case someone asks, no, the Jazzware stand doesn't really work on the Tomy Sonic. The peg is too small and the holes are too big on the new Tomy figure. The main difference between Jazzware's and Tomy is Jazzware's had way more articulation. The head swivel, the arms could go forward and back and up and down, legs could move forward and back, but they could also move out to the side like that. They could bend at the knees, they could twist at the ankles, could bend at the elbows, and twist at the wrists, and they could twist at the waist. And if that wasn't cool enough, they brought out an improved 3-inch Sonic figure later on that had added articulation. In addition to everything else, the elbow joints could bend and they could also swing out to the side like that. They could swivel. And the same with the knees. You could bend them like that and they could swivel. So added points of articulation. And this one has open hands so he could hold these two golden ring accessories that he came with. Here's a comparison of the bottoms of the feet. Here's the Tomy one and here's the Jazzwares one. So here's Jazzwares knuckles next to Tomy knuckles and you can see, I mean the Jazzwares one definitely looks a lot more bulky and chopped up because of all the joints on him and stuff. Knuckles had all the same articulation as Jazzwares Sonic and uh, you can get his arms to go forward a lot easier, and I don't know if that's because the dreadlocks are thinner up here, or they can bend easier, or the arms are more bendable, but you could get him into a gliding pose much easier. Let's see, you can kind of get him like that. So the articulation's better, and again, detail on the bottoms of the shoes that Tomy Knuckles does not have. Another thing you'll notice here is that Tomy Knuckles is considerably larger than Jazzwares Knuckles. I don't know if that's because Tomy was in doing that on purpose, trying to make Knuckles that big, but I don't know, it's just a little bit off to me. I, like I said, I think Knuckles should be right around the same size as Sonic, if not shorter. So overall, I do really like these figures. I think they are good Sonic and Knuckles action figures. I still like the Jazzwares ones a little more because I'm a big fan of articulation, but I know there are a lot of people out there who really couldn't stand the bulky look of those joints, and a lot of people in general that collect action figures that prefer more smooth looking figures. So if that's you, then you might like the Tomy ones more. But these are good figures. I like them a lot more than I thought I would. Almost forgot to bring this up just in case someone asks or wants to see. This is how the classic Tomy figures scale with the modern Tomy figures. And uh, 
If you're going by how they look next to each other in, say, Sonic Generations, then, I mean, it, it looks pretty close to me. I personally don't really care if the classic figures scale with the modern figures according to how they looked uh, side by side in Sonic Generations, because I personally am not going to be displaying the classic styled figures next to the modern figures as if they're in the same universe together. I kind of like to keep the classic stuff separate from the modern stuff personally so it, you know, it's not really a big deal to me. Also, just in case someone wants to see, the new Tomy figures do scale pretty well with the Jazzwares figures. I have Jazzwares Shadow and Jazzwares Tails here next to Sonic and Knuckles, and they look pretty good together. I mean, Tails was, Jazzwares Tails was always a little bit out of scale. He was always a little too big, but like Sonic and Shadow look pretty good together. The Jazzwares figures are just gonna look a little funny next to the Tomy figures with all those joints that the Tomy figures don't have. Another thing I like about these new Tomy figures is, like most of Tomy's Sonic figures so far, at least in my experience, the quality control seems to be alright. It seems to be mostly better than Jazzwares. I've got quite a few broken Jazzwares figures. Many of them have just broken right out of the package because of really crappy, low-quality plastic, and these, so far, I haven't broken a single Tomy figure, and I'm extremely delicate with my figures, just so you know. So here is Sonic's box. Modern Sonic would be right there, Classic Sonic would be right there, and they've got the logos above the characters in the uh, modern and classic designs. Something interesting, for, uh, for Modern Sonic, they just have him labeled as Sonic, but Classic Sonic down here, they have the subtitle Classic. They have a cartoon drawing of Classic Sonic and a CG render of modern Sonic. This is the whole back of the box here. There's a little blurb, a little description of Sonic down here. I'll go ahead and give you a shot of all the languages on the back of the box here, just in case anyone's interested. Not much on the sides, just dark blue with some pixels. Tomy logo down at the bottom. It's the legal info at the bottom. Here's Knuckles box. It's the same deal as Sonic with Knuckles for modern Knuckles at the top there. And uh, it says classic Knuckles at the bottom. Cartoon picture of old Knuckles. CG render of new Knuckles. And down here again is a description of Knuckles. And here are all the languages on the back of the box for the description of Knuckles. Here are the comic books they come with. Sonic comes with the Archie Comics Sonic Universe number 75. Knuckles comes with Sonic Universe number 87. But since Archie Comics has stopped producing Sonic the Hedgehog comic books, I'm not entirely sure what that's going to mean for the future of these sets. I'm not sure how much longer these comic packs are going to be available, at least with the Archie Comics. So that's something to note that could potentially raise the value of these sets in years to come. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you later.